And I mean, you can imagine, like, if, say, Stephen Hawking were alive today, what a profound change that would be. In the context of relentless technological innovation, humanity is standing at the threshold of a breakthrough era with the convergence of Neuralink's brain chip technology and subdermal bronchotrypt implantation technology. This heralds a new chapter in the collective journey of mankind and opens up a realm of possibilities that were previously confined to the realm of science fiction. With this integration, it promises to bring significant improvements to human life. So what will humanity gain from this? Welcome to Tesla Car World. Please show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now let's get started with today's content. The FDA approval marks a significant milestone for Neuralink, a company developing a device surgically implanted into the human brain by a robot capsule of decoding brain activity and linking it to computers. With hopes of utilizing electronic circuits to treat conditions such as paralysis and blindness, while also aiding some disabled individuals in using computers and mobile technology, Akin to a science fiction world, Neuralink is developing a brain-computer interface providing direct connections from the brain to external devices. BCIs record and analyze brain signals, then translate them into output commands executed by the device. Musk sees brain-computer interface as a way to ultimately merge humans with AI, but currently, Neuralink aims to enable paralyzed individuals to control a cursor or computer keyboard solely through their thoughts. Paul Najukian, a research assistant professor of bioengineering at Stanford University, who is involved in the development of BCIs, states that implantable devices like Neuralink placed within the brain tissue can rapidly pick up signals, thus making it entirely plausible for someone to move a computer mouse cursor just a few weeks after surgery with Neuralink's device. Academic researchers have also been experimenting with brain-computer interface in animals and humans for several decades. So Neuralink's first human implantable device is not the first of its kind in that regard. However, Neuralink has brought about some significant improvements because its system is fully implantable and operates wirelessly with rechargeable batteries, fitting the idea that patients will be able to seamlessly use these devices in their daily lives without being limited by cumbersome wires that can clutter their lives. Many BCEI demonstrations in academic laboratories have been conducted with wired setups using cables running from the patient's head to a computer or other external device. Neuralink's implant also records far more individual nerve cells than ever before, using 1,024 electrodes distributed across 64 threads, each thinner than a human hair, inserted into the delicate tissue of the brain. This is crucial for high-performance BCI systems. The increasing focus on precision technology in medicine will pave the way for advancements like Neuralink's brain chips, using standard Bluetooth connections to record brain activity and transmit it to a device such as a smartphone. According to Musk, the first product called the Mind of the Matter will enable users to operate a computer or phone just by thinking. The essence of Neuralink lies in the fact that our brains are fundamentally similar across many millennia and have certain limitations in terms of what these brains can do. We may face challenges in coping with the world around us. And the question arises, can we enhance the brain by creating a digital component that interfaces with it? The company's primary goal is to assist individuals with paralysis and regaining lost communication abilities, including treating neurological conditions and restoring motor function, sensation, and vision. By establishing direct connections between an individual's brain and digital devices, a Neuralink-like device brings the potential to enhance human memory, processing speed, and cognitive abilities. External prosthetics and limbs can be operated through brain-computer interfaces. This will enable individuals who have lost limbs or are paralyzed to regain some level of movement and freedom. The first patient of the company who underwent the Neuralink brain chip technology implantation can now control a computer mouse cursor simply using their thoughts and the patient seems to have fully recovered without any known negative impacts. It is reported that the patient can move the mouse around the screen just by thinking, thanks to the advancements in detecting neural spikes and the promising nature of the initial data. This shows promise, particularly for those with paralysis. This patient is part of the company's first clinical trial named Project Prime, short for the brain-computer interface robotically implanted and interpreted by Neuralink. This controversial technology has the potential to provide these individuals with the ability to use their cognitive capabilities to interact with various technological devices. For instance, they could potentially control smartphones, computers, and other devices just by thinking, 
facilitated by technologies embedded in the chip like telepathy developed by Neuralink. This means that paralyzed individuals could regain functionality through Neuralink in the future. As mentioned, the company used a surgically tasked robot to precisely implant the brain-computer interface chip into the patient's brain, with a robot responsible for inserting and installing the chip in the specific area of the brain controlling motor intention. Neuralink highlights the essential role of the robot by explaining that the brain surface has many blood vessels, and avoiding these blood vessels when implanting electrodes is not aimed at revolutionizing human anatomy. Why is microchip implant under skin a good choice to upgrade humanity? In the past decade, microchips have become increasingly ubiquitous worldwide, appearing in your smartphone, watch, credit cards, or anything related to electronics. They are small square silicon blocks engraved with a large number of electronic connections, acting as switches for computing and storing information. The novelty of a replacing a house key with an implanted microchip device is attracting attention worldwide. But behind it lies a more intriguing story. Why is this technology criticized by some and praised by self-proclaimed cyborgs? Today, more than 50,000 people have opted to undergo surgery to implant a chip under their skin between their thumb and forefinger used as a key fob or credit card. One man even uses it to store links to his will and final testament. As the storage capacity of the chip increases, users may even be able to link to complete works of Shakespeare. Alongside the development of Neuralink, subdermal chip implant technology is also becoming increasingly popular and convenient. Embedding small microchips into the human body not only brings everyday utility, but also enhances personal security. With the ability to store personal, medical, and financial information, subdermal microchips help users save time and enhance the security of their personal information. A typical application of subdermal microchips can be seen in the field of payment technology. Instead of using credit cards or cash, users can make payments simply by using their subdermal microchip. This not only is convenient and quick, but also reduces the risk of loss or theft of financial information. Radio frequency identification technology is the precursor to near field communication technology. RFID tags are most commonly known from theft prevention systems integrated with more expensive items in stores. RFID has been successfully used to track inventory in various fields and industries, such as manufacturing, healthcare, and automotive. NFC technology can be embedded into a small card to facilitate data transmission between mobile phones, laptops, tablets, and other electronic devices nearby. We often use them for contactless payments through smartphones or to set up displays and share information with others. They operate at a short range of about four inches, providing users with a high accuracy and nearly absolute security to safeguard your payment info. Contactless payments have seen a 150% increase from March 2019 to June 2020 in the United States alone, partly due to the pandemic. Originally designed to handle small purchase transactions, contactless technology is now one of the most popular mobile payment methods. Today, there are over 2 billion NFC-enabled devices, and 20% of the world's population has access to NFC. Similarly to NFC, Microchip technology implanted into parts of the human body, such as the hand, will streamline the complexity of always having to use a smartphone for tasks like payments and unlocking cars. The Tesla car key is also a prime example of NFC, meaning you can unlock a Tesla without using the Tesla app or key card in the future. Because it can operate without Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, or LTE connections, it means users can make payments, transmit data, access areas, and use NFC-supporting services even when they are disconnected from the internet. Furthermore, it's a user-friendly and cost-effective technology that can help facilitate the transition to digital and contactless payments, access control, and identification, significantly improving the customer and employee experience in their daily operations. Amal Grafstra, the founder of the implantation and biohacking service Dangerous Things, says that implanted chips don't work like in the Hollywood movies. They don't even function, come alive, or radiate energy without a reader very close by. This means the usability range of a microchipped implant devices is quite limited, and they're primarily a foundational technology that you have to be able to hack to make useful. There are some limited pre-built use cases, such as the Tesla key fob implant kit that allows you to start your car. Moreover, microchip implant kits seem not to require FDA approval, as they're not medical devices like Neuralink. 
The idea of implanting microchips into humans has been a topic of interest for decades, but it wasn't until the early 2000s that this technology became a reality. In 2004, the first microchip implant device for humans was approved by the FDA. Although the current figure of around 10,000 people worldwide with microchip implants seems relatively small, there are signs that this technology is on its way to widespread adoption. This is particularly evident in countries like Sweden, where around 3,000 Swedes have chosen to implant rice grain-sized microchips under the skin between their thumb and forefinger. These chips can store personal information, credit cards, and medical records. Microchip implants have opened doors for the healthcare industry, benefiting both patients and hospitals. These implant devices can serve as a secure and unique identifier for patients as they can streamline administrative procedures such as patient registration, identification, and record retrieval. Additionally, microchip implants can facilitate remote monitoring of vital signs, health status, and treatment adherence. This remote monitoring capability has the potential to improve patient outcomes, reduce hospital admissions, and facilitate early detection of health issues. A study found that equipping patients with tablets and RPM devices helped reduce the risk of readmission by 76% and maintain patient satisfaction levels above 90%. Implantable chips provide a convenient way to quickly access important medical information. Particularly, these implants are valuable for people with conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, or Alzheimer's because they can provide information about past antibiotic use, allergies, current medications, and other relevant data in case of medical emergencies. By embedding a microchip under the skin, healthcare providers can easily access accurate and up-to-date medical records, reducing the risk of errors and improving patient safety. Interestingly, this chip does not contain the entire medical history. Instead, a unique code or number can be used to retrieve information from a secure database. Moreover, microchip technology has the potential to enhance mobility for individuals with physical health limitations, such as rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and motor neuron disease. For example, wheelchair users can approach a door and the chip reader unlocks the door through a responsive transmitter, eliminating the need for keys for paralyzed patients. Microchip implants for the visually impaired are also used to create auditory signals or tactile sensations indoors to improve accessibility and independence. For instance, to create auditory signals, the chip is designed to communicate with compatible devices such as speakers or smart home systems. When activated, it can generate messages or sounds through voice or indicate the presence of specific objects indoors. For tactile signals, the chips can be equipped with tiny tactile sensors that respond to specific touch or pressure inputs. When a visually impaired person interacts with the touch-sensitive areas in the chip, the microchip can respond by providing distinct tactile sensations or vibrations. What are the potential difficulties when implanting microchip technology? Although the benefits are considerable for the elderly and those with paralysis, it's crucial to understand the potential dangers associated with implanting microchips inside the human body. First, the implantation of microchips raises concerns about human privacy rights because they have the ability to track individuals at all times, blurring the lines between physical and digital surveillance. Continuous monitoring like this can lead to a loss of individual autonomy and raise questions about the level of control that external entities may have over an individual's activities and movements. Moreover, cybersecurity risks associated with microchips also draw attention as sensitive information is stored in these systems. Specifically, healthcare organizations reported 145 data breaches in the first three months of 2023. Therefore, to protect human privacy rights from the threats associated with microchip implantation, several measures can be implemented. First, data collection should be minimized, ensuring that only necessary information is stored to reduce the risk of privacy breaches. Strong encryption algorithms must be used to protect all transmitted or stored data, making it inaccessible to unauthorized parties. Furthermore, access control mechanisms such as biometric authentication or unique identifiers should be integrated into the microchip implants to limit access to authorized individuals only. Lastly, legal and ethical considerations need to be taken into account with clear regulations and guidelines set by governments and regulatory agencies to address our concerns about privacy rights, data protection, and individual rights. Advancements in RFID chip design may allow for the development of smaller, more efficient, and higher integrated devices. 
Smaller implants reduce the likelihood of interference with surrounding tissues and minimize the risk of adverse reactions. Additionally, integration can enhance the performance of implants, making them more resistant to external electromagnetic interference. Another issue with implanting microchips is electromagnetic radiation emitted by various electronic devices that can disrupt the function of the implant. Sensitivity to this electromagnetic interference can cause malfunctions in the microchip implant when exposed to strong electromagnetic fields. Therefore, individuals relying on medical devices such as pacemakers or defibrillators may face potential health risks if EMI from external sources disrupts the function of their implanted chips. Hence, future microchip implants are poised to employ shielding mechanisms or advanced filtering techniques to maintain the function of the chip, even in the presence of strong electromagnetic shields. Furthermore, continuous research is needed to develop chips designed to coexist harmoniously with other critical medical devices, ensuring that electromagnetic interference does not affect these technologies. While microchip technology holds the potential to enhance healthcare outcomes and convenience, achieving careful balance is crucial. Prioritizing individual privacy, data security, and health is essential to maintain patient trust. Additionally, healthcare organizations need to ensure responsible and ethical use of microchip implants by healthcare service providers. By addressing concerns, conducting thorough research, and implementing strict protective measures, the healthcare industry can harness the potential of this technology while minimizing risk to individuals. This technology is promising and represents a step towards a greater convenience and simplification of many daily tasks for billions of people worldwide. However, without robust security, safety, and privacy measures in place when using these tiny chips, we may face a distant cybersecurity nightmare. To achieve these consequences, besides the ethical dilemma of dealing with those who refuse to use it, such as being marginalized when it comes to employment opportunities, a recent survey of employees in the United States and Europe found that two-thirds of respondents believe that by 2035, individuals with implanted chips will have an unfair advantage in the job market. A major concern raised by many privacy advocates is the creation of surveillance states and monitoring individuals using this technology. In summary, the utility of Elon Musk Neuralink allows your brand to communicate with computers, essentially functioning as a miniature translator. For people with disabilities, brain-computer interface technology has the potential to change everything, although it's still in its infancy. While there will always be safety checks and hurdles to overcome, Neuralink is heading in the right direction for an exciting future. Similarly, the advent of microchip technology is also hoped to assist patients with paralyzed limbs to be more active in their lives. So, what do you think about how the combination of these two technologies can help paralyzed and support people in life? We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.